You know, there is a message that's going around now that says you can do whatever you want to do because God has given us grace and we don't even have to repent. Do you really believe this is true? And did God really say this? Find out next on Words to Inspire You. Restoration Christian Ministries presents Words to Inspire You. A time for sharing the things that will bring encouragement to your hearts and enlightenment to your minds. Inspirational words to keep you focused on the things of the kingdom of God and his Christ. Join us now and enjoy Words to Inspire You with your host, Pastor John Bazemore. Hello everyone, this is Pastor B and I welcome you again to Words to Inspire You. I am extremely excited to be here today, again having the opportunity to share the word of the Lord with you, things that God has placed in my spirit that I want to spend just a few moments sharing with you. You know, just a few weeks ago I was talking about um, demonic spirits and you know demonic warfare and things to recognize, strongholds and things of this nature, and I never really got into the behaviors that we can actually notice um, before a person actually starts going into bondage or uh, really showing that regression and repression and uh, suppression that I talked about. There are certain behaviors that believers, believers will manifest and I think um, some of them are uh, behaviors that all of us can manifest but some of them really manifest themselves uh, more so corporately than others. Now um, I want to talk about these because I think these are things that are really affecting the body of Christ. Now, the problem with the behaviors that I'm talking about, usually the people that are manifesting these behaviors are not even aware of it, or if they are, they just don't care. So I think it's things that we need to talk about with the body of Christ because, you know, one of the things that I think has one of the downfalls, I think, with social media, it has given everybody a platform, people that never would have had a platform before, some people that are really not ready, uh, quote unquote, for prime time, but uh, you know they are they are just exercising their right, and which it is is actually their right to do so. And I'm not tra trying to say that I am one of the people that's ready for prime time. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that there are some people that never would have um, been exposed to anything like that were it not for. Um, for the media and um, internet and things of that nature. So, in in turn, what has happened? A lot of a lot of people that are um, on this uh, media platform, they're not really submissive to any ministry. They're not really um, covered by a pastor. Um, they they're just people that sometimes they're just not ready as far as you know being ready to. Um, submit themselves to authority and submit themselves to the will of the Lord that he may speak through another person. One of the things that I hear so often, you know, I hear people say this, uh, I really know what they mean, but in actuality, they, they are really stating it uh, incorrectly. Now, people will often say, I don't listen to man, I listen to God. Well, my question or my retort back to you would be, how is God speaking to you? He's going to either do it through the word or he's going to do, do it through another person. So if you are not listening to man and God has a word that he wants to share with you, how are you going to get it? So are you really saying that you're not going to submit yourself to anybody's authority? Is, is that really what you're trying to say? You're not going to submit yourselves to anyone anyone's authority, you're just going to do what God tells you to do. Uh, whether, now if he chooses to speak to somebody else to you, you're not going to receive that. Well, good luck with that. But anyway, I want to talk about these behaviors that you can see uh, that will manifest themselves in people uh, really before they start going into bondage or start going under the control of these uh, strong men of these strongholds that I've uh, talked about before. And there are really six behaviors, there may be more, but it's really six that I want to really kind of focus on uh, today. And uh, the first of these six is um, is rebellion. Now, I could go on and on about rebellion because we all know where it began. We know that this was the, the one thing that, um, that Lucifer did against God in heaven. Uh, he rebelled against his authority. Uh, he wanted God's worship. He wanted his praise. He wanted his authority. So everything that made him God, that is what the enemy wanted. So he rebelled against 
uh, God's authority and God's right to be God. And that is really what he was saying. So now when you see a person uh, in rebellion, uh, the quickest example I can think about, because I'm looking down because I, I wrote this down because I didn't want to forget. Uh, I think Paul is a great, ex not Paul, Saul is a great example of being in rebellion. And most of the time, because of what you believe other people are expecting of you, as opposed to what God has already told you and is expecting of you. Now, Saul, uh, he was given specific instructions on what he was supposed to do after he had won a battle. He ignored this. Um, he did not kill the king. He took the king captives. He did plunder his goods. But instead of you know killing everybody, he brought the king back. He brought things back from there. Uh, he, he was just totally disobedient. That was the first time. Then the second time, uh, he was waiting for Samuel to show up to make the sacrifice. Samuel didn't show up. So again, he rebelled against the authority of God. And he decided to make the sacrifice himself. And I see this... I actually see this quite a bit, uh, particularly in ministry, and this is one of the corporate things that I see. Many times you have uh, people that want to be uh, in authority so badly and want to be the number one person that they feel as though um, they don't really have to listen to anyone. They don't have to um, submit themselves to any type of uh, overruling authority. They can just pretty much do what they want to do. You even see this in church. I don't know where this comes from. People uh, actually think they can just uh, do whatever they want to do, you know, in a service. It doesn't matter. They can just speak whenever they want to speak. And they, they'll do these things in the church, but they wouldn't dare do this thing on the job. But they can just show up when they get ready, speak whenever they want to speak, you know, walk around whenever they want to walk around. And they, they know it's distracting, but again, it's this rebellious spirit that they have. It's just something about that spirit that they just do not want to submit to any type of authority. Now, when you see people operating like this, I promise you, they're not going to think they're doing anything wrong. But most of you, particularly you pastors and you know apostles and bishops and and even prophets, you you will see you will see this a lot in ministry. People, uh, you know, particularly if they are online and now they're going to church, so they might gain a little popularity online. So now they feel that they can take this um, independence that they have online and bring it inside of ministry. And that is just not the case. There there has got to be authority. Uh, exercise in ministry. Otherwise, you're going to have chaos. You know, God had authority. The angels had authority, but they had they had limited authority. You know, they they were subject to the um, to the authority of God, to the power of God. This is where they got their authority and power from. They they couldn't just do what they want to do. You didn't have messenger angels going out. You know, trying to be warring angels. There there was order. There was authority. There was some type. Of, of order there where people knew they had to follow. But now, you know, you have people that have no covering whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, they, and then you have, <laughs> here's, here's the funny thing to me. You have a lot of these people that, that get licensed and they think they have a license to go and do whatever they want to do. And if that is the case, that's fine. You can really do whatever you want to do, but do it with your own license because I will not endorse, um, in, in, you know, giving someone a license. And then you feel as though you can just, you know, you have carte blanche to do whatever you want to do. Now, people will say, well, I don't need a license to preach the gospel. Well, you do not. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, if you do desire to have a license, there are limitations and there are rules that come along with that. But now when people want to rebel, this is what happens. They feel as though you will always hear them say, I don't listen to man. I listen to God. But let me not spend too much time there. Second one is abuse of the tongue. And you will find this in uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3, and Psalms chapter 17, uh, verse uh, 4, also in the book of James chapter 3. And particular, I want to kind of hone in on James chapter 3, because this really gives a good, sheds some good light on what happens with people. People, they don't, I guess, I mean, I guess we know it scripturally and we know it intellectually, but I think sometimes we don't realize the damage that we do by abusing the things that we allow our tongue to say. We, we, we don't realize the damage that we are bringing to ourselves by just saying whatever we want to say whenever we want to say it. And then some people will say, well, that's just me. 
No, that's not just you. That's that spirit that you're allowing to use you and you justify it by saying, that's just how I am. But now we are told clearly in the word of God that we have to control the tongue. We are told that. You, you, you would be surprised the amount of murdering that we do with the tongue. I would dare say we do more murdering with our tongue than we do uh, physically to people because when you are murdering a person's reputation, you know, when you are murdering, murdering a person's character, that has far more reaching effects than it would if you just kill the person and it's done with. But when you murder a person's character, you, what you're really doing, you, you are really sauntering them, you know, forever. You, you, are, you are using your tongue uh, to put on somebody else because of the insecurities that you have. And, and understand me right and hear me right. You know, more times than not, People that are being abusive with their tongue. And I mean, even sometimes, you, I, I recently saw something. And I, I, I wasn't going to say this, but I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. I recently saw something where you actually have preachers cussing in the from the podium. I mean, just, just using profanity like they would in the street. Now, I don't know. I, I know I'm older you know, than, than a lot of people are now. I mean, at my age, I'm in my 60s now. So I'm one of the ones, I'm one of the people that, you know, that as a young minister, I used to look at, but now I'm one of them. And I guess, you know, it, it, it really bothers me because I don't ever want to get so progressive that I feel that it's okay to use profanity uh, in the pulpit. And this is what the Bible talks about abusing the tongue. Because listen, life and death is in the power of what we say. And a lot of times we're speaking death on ourselves. We're speaking, you know, curses on ourselves, even on our children. I've even heard people tell their children, you will never be anything. That's abuse of the tongue, folks. You, you can't allow that. And here, here's something else. When you see people doing this freely, like rebellion, where they just, it, it doesn't bother them at all. You know, you know they headed, they're headed into rebellion. You Normally that stronghold would be a lying spirit. This is the type of spirit that gets in and tries to use a person's tongue to um, assassinate another person's character or, you know, to use profanity. This is a lying spirit that wants to get inside. And that lying spirit is a stronghold, just like rebellion. Rebellion is normally manifested by this, the strong man, which would be the spirit of pride. You know, a prideful person does not want to take orders or does not want to uh, go under the authority of anyone. Next would be a critical spirit. Now, uh, this is, you can find some of this in Psalms chapter 101, verses 5 through 7. Now, a, a critical spirit is this. A person wants to be the one that's in charge. So what do they do? They criticize everything a leader is doing. They criticize everything the parent is doing. They criticize everything the boss is doing on their job. They are never satisfied with anything. You know, and these are people that are believers now, but now because they are so used to not listening to anyone and they criticize everything, I don't care what it is. You can put on a blue jacket. You know, why you got on blue? Why didn't you wear black? Pastor B, why do you have this polka dot jacket on? Well, I have the jacket on because I bought it. But again, it's just a critical spirit. It's people that no matter what you do, they're going to find something wrong with it. And I'm going to tell you something. This was, and I did a pro broadcast on Saturday with one of my uh, fellow, fellow ministry brethren. And I was sharing with them that one of the things, you know, people say, well, why did Cain have such a problem with Abel? And I was sharing with um, with the pastor that Cain didn't really have a problem with Abel, Cain had a problem with Cain, and he projected that problem onto Abel. And this is th this is what a critical spirit does. You really have a problem with who you are. You have a problem with you know your own insecurities, and by you know by criticizing others, then it gives you you feel you feel as though it's giving you uh, empowerment over that situation and over that person that may actually be exercising authority over you. And again, the, the problem is we don't feel it. Now, let, let me just, just suggest, uh, address, I'm sorry, one thing. I know that there is a, a teaching going around now that is saying, you know, it's really not necessary to talk about behavior because everything 
that um, when Jesus died on the cross, everything that we have done or that we will do in the future is covered. So we don't have to be concerned about repenting. We don't have to be concerned about living right. We don't have to be concerned about holiness or righteousness. You know, because of justification, we can do anything that we want to do. I All I can say is good luck with that type of a doctrine because I believe it's a doctrine that comes straight from the pit of hell and it's really crushing the lives of people on this earth because now they're finding out people are realizing now that you know when you do what you want to do or when you feel as though you have a right to do what you want to do because this is really a doctrine that a lot of people that don't want to do right anyway they will take on but again, it, it plays right into that behavior type thing. You know, they were looking for a reason where they didn't have to be concerned about holiness or be concerned about their own character. So now they grab a hold of this quote unquote grace, grace teaching and they use this as a, as a means of saying and doing whatever they want to do. And that's why people feel so free in the church, particularly because you will find this you will find this manifested corporately. These first three that I've talked about, you will find this manifested corporately in church more so than anywhere else because this is a way that people try to demean or try to lessen the authority of another person. You know, they tear them down to build themselves up. And I promise you, you will get nowhere with that. God will not honor that type of thing. If you can't submit yourself to anybody, and if you want to be critical of everything that God may be doing, you know, you may say, well, why does, I mean, why do, why do we think we have to listen to you? Well, listen, isn't that the same argument that Moses, I'm sorry, that Aaron and uh, Miriam used against their brother? You know, they, they felt that they were just as anointed as their brother, but God had to step in and show them that it is important that you follow authority. It is important that you recognize I have anointed this person for what I'm, what I have called them to do. And it is incumbent upon you. If you want to one day be a leader, then you learn in the ranks of fellowship. That is where you learn. You learn to be a good leader by the way that you follow. But unfortunately, we have people that are entitled right now. They feel as though, you know, they don't have to wait. They don't have to grow. They don't have to go through anything. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm not following anybody anywhere that has not been through anything. You are dangerous. You are absolutely dangerous to yourself and you are dangerous to everyone else because everybody needs to go through something to develop that person that God has called you to be. Uh, let, let me go on because I, I need to finish this. Uh, the next one, number four, would be fear. Now, faith really begins to walk out of the door when fear, fear begins to operate. And I see this a lot in believers. You have a lot of believers that have a lot of fears, you know, and that's why they can't operate in faith. Now, they, they speak faith and they talk faith real good. But now when it comes down to actually walking by faith and not by sight, they fail every single time. Now, I'm going to give you an example. You have a lot of believers that, that I've even talked to that are afraid of, um, of inheriting a sickness uh, because of something that runs in their family. It's a fear that they had. My mother had it. You know, my other sister had it. And now, and then they start abusing the tongue. And now I'm going to have it. What did I say before? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So when you start exercising fear, you are really inviting that thing to come on. But again, these are behaviors that you start seeing. Then they've not fallen into bondage yet. But now you can know when you, just by listening to a person talk, watching their behavior, watching the things that they do, watching the decisions that they make. And I'm gonna tell you something else. Fear is the one thing that will cause you to make bad decisions. And once you start making bad decisions, you are absolutely headed for bondage. Not only fear of family history, fear of being alone. I see this a lot in women, you know, uh, and I hear it a lot from women. They, they don't want to be alone. And again, I just mentioned making bad decisions because you have a fear of being alone. And that strong man or that stronghold that, that, that really operates this behavior, of course, is the spirit of fear. And this spirit of fear will make you believe that the things that God has promised you are not going to happen. You're going to, you're going to end up being an old maid. You're going to end up being by yourself. Your children are going to walk away. Your grandchildren are not going to know you. This is fear. This is a spirit. 
You know, and unfortunately, when people are going through this, they don't recognize it. And more times than not, they don't even want to hear it when you try to point it out to them. And they, you even have people, believers that are fear, have a fear of dying. I don't really understand this one because, I, I mean, short of the rapture, that's the only way that you're going to get to be with the Lord. So I don't really understand that. But again, this is a legitimate fear that many of us have. You have a lot of people that won't fly because they're afraid that the plane is going to crash. I mean, these are things that when you start operating like that, when you start exercising that behavior, you can expect more times than not. That strong man or that stronghold that I talked about a few weeks ago is going to start gripping you. And the next thing you know, you're going to start going in regression and repression and suppression and all of the other things I talked about. The next would be unforgiveness. There, There is nothing I can say about this other than if you can't forgive, then you won't be forgiven. I mean, it's really that simple. And you have people now that absolutely justify this behavior. It's gotten to the point where it's actually grown into bitterness. You have people that are mean-spirited about it. You know, they, they are fine. But now when you bring up something that has really hurt them deeply and wounded them deeply, and they feel as though they have a right to feel this way, then they're not going to listen to you. They they will they will try to give you scripture to justify their behavior. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is this, Mark 11, 25, if you can't forgive, neither can your father in heaven forgive you. And I feel as though I sense in my spirit right now that I'm really talking to someone. So I want, let me pause here. And I want to give you that opportunity to repent. If you're one of the ones that are listening to this broadcast and you know that you are carrying unforgiveness and bitterness, you know, and malice in your heart to someone, you know, God even said in his word that if you are bringing an offering to the altar and you realize that you have an altar with your brother, leave that altar there and go get that thing right. So you can't, you can't pay God off or con God by trying to give and say, I'm so and seated looking for my blessing. No, what you need to look for is a way to find uh, in your heart to forgive that person that you are carrying malice in your heart towards. Because now, again, if you can't forgive, neither can your Father in heaven forgive you. And the last one would be involvement with demonic activity. And of course, the strong man there would be familiar spirits and the spirit of Antichrist. Now, you, you say, well, why in the world would a believer do this? Well, okay, let's let's look at a couple of things. You know, uh, do you are you one of the ones that talk about what sign are you you know, you, 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 you're into astrology. I mean, you're talking about dealing with familiar spirits. Seriously. I've even heard, heard a believer tell, say to someone that they actually went to a, a palm reader and had their palms read. You can't be serious. I mean, you must have gone somewhere and just bumped your head repeatedly. You don't do things like that. Believers, you don't even understand the type of spirits, the demonic spirits that you were inviting in your life by doing things like this. And, and here's the thing. If you are seeing these behaviors in people that you know, it's incumbent upon you to make sure that you point it out. Because more times than not, they're, they're not going to see it themselves because they're going to justify it. But now you at the very least have to go to them and say, listen, I see what you're doing. You know God is not pleased with this. You need to repent and get it right. And that is the key. That is the one difference that God has made between us and the angels that fail. He has given us the right and the opportunity to repent. And I want to say to you in closing this broadcast, if you are one of the ones that's exercising these behaviors, believe, believers, you need to repent. You, you need to put yourself under authority. You need to get out to let go of that rebellious, lying, critical spirit. Listen, those things have to stop. You have to realize who you are in Christ. You can't be concerned about what somebody else is operating in. Well, they, they, have, they have the spirit of prophecy. Well, I don't have to listen to them. Well, you don't. But you're going to have to listen to someone. I promise you that. So again, if you are one of the ones that's operating in this, look, just start searching. Uh, just look introspectively at yourself. And just ask God if there's anything in your heart that removes you away from him. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about, isn't it? We are trying to get closer to him. Less of us 
and more of him. So I want to end here, but again, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to share this word with you. I have wanted to do this before, back when I was doing uh, demonic activity, but somehow I just got away from it. There was other urgent things that was in my spirit, but I wanted to make sure that I got back to this because if you see these behaviors in people, you know, you will know then that you need to get on top of that because they are headed for bondage. So again, thank you for giving me this time with you. I love you with the love of the Lord. I truly do. I look forward to seeing you on next week. And until that time, my prayer is that the Lord God will bless you real good. I love you. Thank you for joining Words to Inspire You with your host, Pastor John Baysmore. Words to Inspire You is a production of Restoration Christian Ministries Incorporated. Teaching the word, living by faith, growing in grace. We thank you for watching this broadcast and pray that you will continue to partner with us. We invite you to join us again for our next program as we present Words to Inspire You, a time of refreshing.